rain fell heavily during the foggy night. The grimy street lights flickered on and off, illuminating the deserted streets. Off in the distance, every so often a vicious bolt of lightning would strike, the sound echoing loudly through every street and alley. It had been an ordinary day. People made their way home from a hard day's work, continuing their usual schedule of wake up, eat, go to work, finish work, eat, watch TV, sleep. Michael was one of these people. After spending his first day working at a new cafeteria, newly opened with a good pay, the only problem was that it was situated a few miles away. So, being a 17 year old college student, he was forced to take the train. Michael sat alone. He preferred it that way. No one to bother him or bring up unwanted subjects, or even to just be there. It would be a nuisance. The only other people he could see were a few old looking people, reading newspapers and sipping on the cheap coffee he bought from the vending machine last stop. The lights of the train flickered regularly as Michael stared out the window, his cheek resting on his fist as he passed house after house and travelled through tunnel after tunnel. He took a deep sigh as he scanned the night sky. It was a clear night. Stars glistening through the black blanket and a large full moon showering the landscape in a soft, elegant light. Despite the boredom, Michael was relaxed and content. It had been a good day. The train entered another tunnel, throwing his imagination off course as he jumped back into reality. Looking around the interior of the train once again, Michael submitted to the old fashioned way of life upon noticing the newspaper laying neatly on the table in front of him, so he picked it up and flipped through, hoping to find something of vague interest. After a few moments he came across a news report from the 24th of March 2012, today's date. It read, Mysterious murderer leaves entire family dead. Horror has struck the small town of Darlington today as a family consisting of a father, mother, two sons and a daughter have all been found dead in their beds. Reports say that detectives arrived at the scene only to find no possible evidence left behind but a knife lodged in the mother's throat. Forensic scientists have attempted to gather a DNA sample on the handle of the knife. However, the test showed that the last person to hold it was the mother. And as of now, this case was ruled off the possibility of this being suicide. Michael stops reading there. Not only due to the story, but the fact that he lived in Darlington. He was on his way back there right now. Slowly approaching the town in which a murder resides. It was an odd thought that made him unsettled. He adjusted himself to a more comfortable position and wiped the sweat from his brow. Enough of that newspaper, he thought to himself. As he put it down and laid his head back, his hands in his arms and his eyes firmly shut. Tink, 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 Michael froze. Slowly, he opened a single eye and dragged it to the source of the noise, to the left. At the window. The sound of tapping on glass continued. Tink, tink, tink. Just an animal or something, he whispers, his voice still shaky despite his attempt at self assurance. However, as his eyes met with the window, the hairs on his back stood straight. There, in the darkness of the tunnel, a pitch black figure stared from the bottom left of the window, straight into the eyes of Michael. It appeared to be humanoid, but made of some dark cloud, similar to liquid nitrogen. It had pinhole eyes and, even creepier, a large, human-like grin. Michael could also faintly hear it, almost as if it was struggling to breathe. The creature kept its smile, and slowly descended until it was out of sight. Michael was paralysed, his eyes fixed on the window, scanning all corners. He couldn't believe the petrifying creature he just saw. However, before he had time to think, the flickering lights shut off completely. The darkness filled each section of the train one by one, followed by the screams of the passengers. Michael instinctively huddled himself into the corner of his seat and up against the wall of the train with insane speed. 
His breath was shaky and his eyes were wide as he stared into the pitch black corridors. The screaming had stopped now. With one hand, Michael reached into his bag under the table and reached for the small LED light on his keychain. It wasn't much, but it was better than nothing. Like a western standoff, he drew it out from his bag, flipped it on and shone it into the darkness. Feeling more confident, he slowly rose from the seat and stood up, shining the light down the other carriages. Huh. Hello? He croaked, his hands unable to keep the light still. What happened next made his eyes go wide with fear, and the nerves in his muscles seized up. His very heart stopped momentarily as a warm gust of breath ran down his neck, and a raspy voice from behind said the word, Run! He didn't hesitate. He sprinted down the carriages one by one, dodging fallen suitcases and belongings of the other, now missing, passengers. He daren't look behind him. He couldn't handle looking at the creature's face again. Luckily, a glimpse of hope rose, as up ahead was the end of the train. However, as he came up to the door and placed his hand on the handle, it wouldn't open. Locked. With all of his anger, he pounded his fist against the glass, disregarding the pain and the tears welling up in his eyes. Eventually, he glanced to the right at a mounted fire extinguisher. With the same bloody hand, he grabbed it and held it up with both hands like a ram. Taking a few steps back, he charged with full force into the door and the extinguisher collided with the window, shattering it completely. Taking a quick step back, he realised the train was still moving, and much faster than originally. Not only that, but they were still in the dark, dimly lit tunnel. Michael had no other choice. He had to get out of the train, otherwise he would be killed. Whether this creature was harmful or not, he couldn't risk it. But or was it even chasing him? With that in mind, he turned around. He shouldn't have. There, in his face, were the pinhole, pure white eyes staring deep into his soul. The large grin that held sharp teeth and blood red gums. It was a face you'd see at night as a young boy under his blanket. You'd stare into the darkness and there, in your closet, a face staring at you. Michael stared. That's all he did. He didn't move. He couldn't move. The creature then opened his mouth and whispered into his ear. You weren't fast enough. Friday the 25th of March 2012. Young man found on train tracks. Badly injured. A young man identified as Michael Vere was found today on train tracks leading out of a tunnel and into Darlington. He was found by a couple walking along the train track, and despite how dangerous such a thing was, they have not been charged. Mike, the male couple that found Michael, said, We were walking when we saw something bundled up on the train track. We had a flashlight with us, so we went ahead and checked it out. As we got closer, we realised it was a per person. A man. We ran up to it and noticed he was still breathing, conscious even. He was gasping for breath and as I picked him up and carried him on my shoulder, his body was, uh, it was a mess. You couldn't think it was a body if you, if you saw it. His girlfriend Jill continued for him and said, We looked, we walked for a long time. I tried to give the man water but he knocked it away with what was apparently his hand. He kept talking to himself, saying, Whisp. And, it, it, it's, it, here. Which was creepy, to say the least. Eventually, we made it to the next station, where we had a good enough signal, and others helped us with him. We called an ambulance, and now they're saying he's in critical condition. Michael Vare continues to struggle to stay alive. However, he's in safe hands, and should be able to hang on. Detectives are unsure as to whether or not it was a suicide attempt due to the damage that was caused. His skin was slightly charred and black. An arm was torn right off and found at the scene later on, and the rest of his body was covered in cuts and heavy bruising. Investigation will continue, and we will uncover more of the situation in a later story. Thursday, 29th of March, 2012. 
train discovered five days after the departure. A train that had departed on Thursday the 24th has been found today in Newcastle. What seemed like an ordinary train was, to everyone's horror, filled with at least six bodies, all completely unidentifiable due to what appears to be marks from a large blade. However, no evidence has been found as of yet. Reports say that this could link in with the near death of Michael Vare, and that perhaps he was the murderer of these people before jumping out the back of the train, resulting in his heavy injuries. However, this has not been confirmed and no charges have been filed. Michael Vare has partially recovered from his injuries, but has not stopped talking, or slept for that matter, without the aid of sleeping gas. Yet that still has little effect. Doctors say that he would be fine, covering a little under a year. His mental state, however, is still to be looked into. In the month following that news report, Michael Vare, still heavily injured, escaped from hospital and has yet to be found. Following this, there have been an increasing number of murders in Darlington, with notes at every scene. They all read, Run.